to have, mm, just gone off. So I'm very honored to have Vimal, my brother Vimal with me uh, from Belgium. So how are you, brother? Good, good. I'm doing very well. I'm happy in quarantine. <laughs> oh, yes. We're in coronavirus. You just come back from India, right? You've had a, a few weeks off in that. Can I ask, how, how was it in India in terms of the coronavirus? They've gone pretty crazy there too, haven't they? Uh, yeah, it started, you know, when I was there, it started going, um, uh, being more active around this. Mm. And I was actually supposed to come back a few days ago only. And I realized if I want to come back, I have to go now. So, yeah. so well, I had to change you. my yeah. ticket and I literally got the last plane out of there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then the day after they closed the borders, they closed everything. So I was oh. like really yeah. lucky to get back in time. It's meant to be, brother. It's just madness over here. I came out of the Vipassana retreat um, and me and Neil's a Philly who's on Facebook as well, my very good friend. And we, it was just empty, the streets. We didn't know. We had no news. Ten, ten days of silence and no news and then just come out to that. And it was like zombie. The film, I know you've seen the film 28 Days Later when the streets of London are just dead. It was like yeah. that. Whoa. Yeah. It's a great reference to have. But my God, yeah, things have been kicking up. Anyway, let's uh, keep focused here. Let's talk about um, I want to start by asking you. Um, because I don't actually know you fully your story. So I wonder if you could share how you got into the health community, how long you've been in the health community and what woke you up. Okay. Yeah, so it didn't start with health for me. Um, mm. I started, uh, I was in a music band and I was playing a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced to LSD. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and through this, I had a very big awakening experience mm. um, where literally i was not the same person the day after it was mm. huge and um all i could think about was how to get back to that state of unity that i had experienced that bliss that joy of god or whatever you want to call it mm. uh, so that for me started a really intense search and um, i experimented more with psychedelics mushrooms and lsd and went down that rabbit hole a bit Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, I wanted to find a way how to get into that state naturally. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started, this was some 22, 23 years back. Mm. And how, old I, how old are you now? Are you 40 something? Right? Yeah, 40. 40, 40 something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I started looking into meditation, and the first meditation I came across was Buddhist meditation. And then soon after that, I went to India and I studied in India with uh, different, mostly Tibetan lamas in the beginning. And I basically went 100% into it and just gave up my belongings, sold everything I had and stayed and lived in India. And that started a long journey of exploring different traditions. Uh, I studied with different yogis. I started going first into more mindfulness practice, uh, more traditional uh, vipassana style practice. Mm -hmm. And then I was going more into the esoteric uh, Buddhism and also other mm -hmm. esoteric lineages of Taoism, of uh, uh, certain inner Hindu yogas, Ashtanga yoga. When I say yoga, I don't mean so much the physical culture of yoga. Mm -hmm. I mean the internal energetic aspect of it. Right. So, yeah. so I stayed in India for about 16 years, almost 16 full time. years. Wow. At 18 years old, roughly. Were you 18, 19, 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 years in India. Wow. Yeah. Dedication to um, the path you were on. That's extreme dedication to me. Yeah, yeah that was that was my life. It still is my life. But now <laughs> I've also integrated more into to the world. <laughs> yeah. You went yeah. hard for 16 years and really pushed yourself into that world. And now you come out as a um, not that we have a complete, but now you're just, you, yeah, you've centered yourself back to a more balanced, I guess, way of looking at life. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've integrated more. Well, yeah, many things happen in between. I was in mm. the sun and that brought me more back into the world. Mm. And the path is never complete. You never reach a point where you're like, mm. okay, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. When you reach that point where you think you're done. Mm. And you really need to question yourself again. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I like it. Unless you're the Buddha, maybe, and you've enlightened yourself. I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe, but mm. I believe even even if you reach what is called full enlightenment, there is a journey of life going on that doesn't stop, and that's the spontaneous unfoldment of life that you need to carry on with. 
Yeah, I love it. Even, and, even Buddha, you know, mm. practiced for the rest of his life. He never stopped practicing. Yeah. Oh, right. The Vipassana, the meditation. Yeah, yeah. He was doing that. He, he was practicing the rest of his life. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, cool. and, and, oh. and he was sure high on his discipline and eating very less food and doing all these things. So, you know, and, you know, the age during too. So, yeah, he definitely did the age during, which I only learned about recently. And I put my book. Yeah, he's, he yeah. was on it. He knew that medicine and it's four times in the Pali Canon. So, yeah, yeah. And you're into urine therapy, too. You're another you're in a special crew. I love everybody and I don't judge everyone on their path. But I my particular favorites are people that did urine therapy. And you're into it in a way that's quite hardcore like myself. Now you're doing age urine. Right. And yeah. I remember seeing I don't mind I'm showing people. Um, I saw a photo of you and you were lifting vats with age urine. I think that was, kind of, <laughs> it was such a funny post to watch, like did exercise with it gallons of it <laughs> yeah that was a funny one i had to go with that one <laughs> yeah it's good so what is your experience of yeah. um, urine therapy what what what, what power what, i don't want to judge like that but i mean you, you do it because it's very powerful to you right yes indeed yeah so i got into it in india as you know it's a it's a practice in india um it's not super common, but in some circles it's common. Uh, I was moving in circles of sadhus, of uh, wandering yogis. Mm. And um, there was a group that were doing urine therapy and it was the first time I ever heard about it. Mm. And their skin was glowing and they were really youthful looking, you know, and they were just, um, yeah, they had this really good energy. Mm. And um, they... Um, this particular sadhu, he had uh, two wives actually, and he, he they would drink each other's urine as well to connect um, with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was all very interesting. So I started doing urine therapy for quite some years, mm -hmm. um, and then it was on and off. And I uh, I was traveling, so then I found it more difficult, and I stopped, and then came back mm -hmm. on it, and. Uh, um then i started hearing about the um, lymphatic system and how it's not good to drink it and i stopped for a bit i got tricked by this whole mm. you know dr yeah. Moore group dr Morse. Yeah. yeah 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 and but but you know it it, it was still calling me and i was really like this can't be right there, yeah. there, there's more to this this can't be right because it i know how it feels it feels so good and i was just doing mm. fresh urine at that time just for, which is powerful, yeah. Yeah, which is which is powerful. Yeah. But then when I came uh, across the age urine information. When did you come across age urine? When, when did you? Uh, Monica was, I think, the first one I heard about talking about it, mm -hmm. and then then I started researching, and I came across your stuff too, mm -hmm. and and I read a lot of that, and yeah, I went all into it, and yeah. Yeah. it's it it has a lot more power for sure. I love both. Now let me say mm -hmm. that. I, they both have a really good benefit to me. I love looping, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. but the aged one, yeah, it does something so, different. Wow. That's crazy. You do a lot of things. So yeah, a year in therapies one. Um, you did a video on sun gazing. Uh, I thought that was really interesting too. That's a powerful yeah. healing modality, and you got a lot of experience. I think many years back, I'm guessing with uh, sun gazing longer than me probably been doing that too. Yeah, sun gazing. I love. Uh, mm. I, I love it. I was doing more carefully before. Um, like slowly ramping up the time mm. um, but now i'm just going full in and then when the sun is out i'm gazing for yeah i don't know uh, i was in india now and i was gazing about an hour or two a day so, ah. and what times people say it's just sunrise sunset is it do you do it do outside those times or i do outside of those time too but uh, my main preferred time is uh, sunrise, sunrise sunset because it's more yeah. relaxed in a way uh, it's um yeah it's more meditative i can really get into it, it and really get i feel into like you, yeah i feel like you can do other things more you can focus more on yeah. doing other meditations while you're doing it whereas the midday sun you just got it's so intense sometimes you can't focus on anything else although it's yeah. good yeah yeah yeah. Mm. yeah what do you do what do you do out of interest um what would you mess about with a lot of different things um when you're doing the sun gazing or do you just let your mind wander what are you doing uh i do a few different things um many times i do my standing qigong Cool. Which is, uh, you know, standing in uh, still postures, like standing like a tree. I'm sure you've seen people. Um, you hold like a ball in front of you. There's different positions, yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah. And and that's a really beautiful one because you're not doing uh, internal uh, energy cultivation consciously. Mm. You're just holding these postures. And by holding these postures, putting mm. your body in a certain way and emptying your mind, you're not leading the energy with your mind. You're just completely mm. emptying your mind. Mm. So it's very meditative. Mm. And you will feel the energy start moving on its own accord. So you're just surrendering to that energy flow. So that goes really well with gazing at the sun at the same time. That makes sense to me. So you're receiving the sun's energy instead of manipulating it with meditation, which is good in a way. You're getting the sun's yeah. energy probably in a greater degree because you're letting the stillness and the energy come in much deeper level. Being yes. Is that something to do with link, being present to the moment when you're keeping still doing Qigong? So you're allowing more presence and mindfulness into your life. Is that what it is or as well? Of course. Of course. Well, it's double. Okay, uh, so this kind of leads us into a different subject. You have, um, when you practice mindfulness, you're tapping into the consciousness level, right? You're tapping into the empty awareness, which is at the base of what we are. Uh, mindfulness leads to a silent mind. And when you have a silent mind, it's more easy to, to see the deeper level of ourselves, which is consciousness. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, if you imagine consciousness as this um, vast space, but uh, and that's our true nature, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not just empty, okay? Many meditations take us to that space, toward that direction. And I would say most meditation focus mm -hmm. on stillness, uh, focus on this aspect of being, yeah? Which is beautiful, and when you really get a glimpse of it, it's, it's very freeing, because so, for so long in our life we've been uh, in our mind, in our emotion, and lost in that, thinking that's who we are. Yeah, yeah? And That's very limiting. Yeah. So when we discover this boundless space beneath all of that, it's very freeing. Finally, we're, we're finding a peace that's always present. Yeah. As long as we tap into it through mindfulness, through the moment, Mm. That that's the now, yeah. The space is the now, where everything unfolds. That's the space of the now, yeah. yeah. But one aspect that's often forgotten is mm. the Shakti aspect, is the feminine, mm. is the energy that's dancing in that space, yeah. Mm. So that energy is bliss. Shakti is bliss. Shakti is the creative force that unfolds from that mo from that space, and they are not different. So when we only focus on one, in many meditation, it's very male-centered. It's only focused on the space, on the consciousness, on the being here, being now. But then you're missing the bliss, and then you're missing the juice of life. And this is where sexual cultivation comes in. This is where energy work comes in. This is where right. all this stuff comes in. I love that. So, so let's transition so, to that. Um, yeah, so, uh, before yeah. Uh, I want to say, when you're doing these standing Qigong postures, for mm. example, you're working on both levels at the same time because your mind is empty. Your mind is, uh, the deeper you go into it, should be dwelling in just empty. Consciousness. How does it get empty during Qigong? Is it because you're focusing in on the, the movements and the stillness? What are you doing to get your mind empty during Qigong? You just you just really in the moment with that posture. What, what's your senses doing? How do you yeah. get? Yeah. Yes, you can be either just focusing on the energy running through you um, on, on the posture itself. Mm. For me, uh, I've meditated for many years now. So for me, it's very easy to just go into a uh, empty state of consciousness. Right, yeah. So yeah. I just go into that, mm -hmm. and then the deeper you can fall into that state of uh, empty being, mm. the more energy can rise. Right, yeah. Yeah, because they are, as I said, they are one. They're the same. Shiva and Shakti, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call these now. Shiva being the consciousness, mm. the empty field of consciousness. Shakti being the energy dancing, the creative energy within that consciousness. Yeah? Mm. And they are seen as in union. Why are all these tantric uh, pictures of Buddhas and uh, Shaktis in union? It's because of this. Yeah? Because our basic nature is energy 
and consciousness. Creative energy arising out of consciousness. And they're never separate. Yeah? Mm. So the deeper you can fall into one, the deeper you can fall into the silence, the mm. more energy will come out. Or mm. the deeper you can go into energy work mm. uh, and, and more develop that side, the, the more consciousness will unfold. Oh, I like that, particularly the second. I resonate strongly and I'm learning so much here from what you're saying myself, but I like the second part too. So you're saying even if you didn't do the mindfulness aspect, you've just focused all about the manipulation in a good way of like the cosmic orbit meditation, for example, or just manipulating yep. your energy. Um, you can still yep. draw from both um, mindfulness yes. from that. Mm. Yes, indeed. Indeed. They, they, and it's uh, to have a balanced practice, really, mm. it's good to do both. Yeah. yeah? I always advocate and what I teach is uh, a mixture of energy work and a mixture of stillness so that you're balanced. Right. Yeah. Uh, but mm. even a person going 